Welcome back to Philippines Uncut. Tonight's topic is e-commerce trends and opportunities. And uh, joining us still is Janet Rural, e-commerce advocate. And joining her is her former student, uh, Nikki Roldan, and she is with Save and Earn Wireless. Welcome, Nikki, to Philippines Uncut. And of course, welcome, Janet, to our second segment. Now, um, tell us a bit about the, your relationship. You were once a student of, of Janet. Yes. Uh, I met Miss Janet last year when we started our uh, e-commerce uh, entrepreneurship course. That was around January. And then uh, we graduated uh, around Feb this year. So that was about one year and a month of parang mentorship from Miss Janet. So over that period, we um, got to meet other students, her other students, XCJM, and uh, I also got to meet other people in the e-commerce uh, industry for logistics and all of that. So uh, it was truly a very enriching experience. It's a one-year course, you said? Yeah. And it covers, does it cover the entire uh, range of topics when it comes to e-commerce? More or less, more, more or, less. or less. We try yeah. to cover as much as we can. Uh, but of course, you only see the real thing once you're in action. So okay. basically, if people take your course, like uh, Nikki here, you can already, you know, you're armed with the knowledge to, to start yes. an e-commerce business or maybe... That is the deliverable. Yes. Oh, really? Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay, so, so part of the deliverable of, of Janet's course is you have to apply this to your own business or start an e-commerce business. Yes. Start an e-commerce business or uh, have an existing business but launch it as e-commerce. Great, great. Let's talk about your business, Save and Earn Wireless. Tell us a little bit about uh, your, your family business, right? Yeah, yeah, that is. So Save and Earn Wireless is actually a gadget retail shop and we're based in Visayas. So uh, our branches are in Cebu, Bohol, Dumaguete, Bacolod area. And uh, last year, uh, yeah, as it was part of the deliverable also, uh, we started our own e-commerce shop. Okay. So that was late last year. And then um, now we're online. It's under saveandearn.com.ph. And uh, we've been selling gadgets online ever since. We do COD nationwide. Sorry, that's cash on delivery nationwide. And uh, we also... We also use our online platform to communicate with our customers. So it's interesting because you get to go, you get to do this with your existing cons customers, yes. and you get new customers as well, even customers not from our area. So and like before, with your forty bricks and mortar yeah. uh, outlets, it really was servicing just just that community or the the, 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 the local area. communities, no? Yeah, yeah. And now um, you 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 do sales and uh, you you send goods. Luzon, Mindanao, and Luzon, the even as far as Butuan, <laughs> we, yeah, we, we delivered items there. So uh, it's actually very interesting because um, with retail, you know, it's very uh, challenging right now with yes. retail because uh, uh, your overhead is getting higher and higher every month. Rent, especially if you go to the big malls like SM, it's quite expensive and your in, in your field is pretty tight eh? because there's so many people selling yes, right gadgets and things like that yeah, so yeah. Uh, your parents started this business as you mentioned like, yeah. 20 years ago so your parents started this business um, when did you guys realize that you you wanted to get into e-commerce when did it dawn on you that, that this could be the next step that we should get into it we uh, decided actually around three years ago to get into e-commerce but we didn't the first attempt was I would say it was quite unsuccessful. Okay. Uh, and uh, it was only last year that we really got to launch our e-commerce site. So as I said, it's very, it's a very, it's very challenging, especially for startups or maybe small and medium enterprises, because you sometimes you just don't know where to start. Yeah. Okay. Now you mentioned two years ago you you tried to launch it, but it wasn't too successful. What was yes. the problem, and how did you get over that? Uh, the problem really was development. Just. Even we couldn't even get the site online because we were really stuck in development. Because as you well know, I, I don't really have a background in, in web mm, development. Mm. I don't have a background in coding or programming. So likewise, everything, <laughs> everything was just uh, we had to. We had all we had was the internet, and we couldn't really ask anyone yeah. for advice. Everyone is giving us different advice and different quotations. So. And you know, there are a lot of experts, right? There are in, yeah. in web design, and then you have SEO. You've got yeah. all these different experts. But, and, and I guess I can relate to your problem because um, where do you start, right? Right, Janet. So, um, thank, thankfully that you have this 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 school that you you can help people who want to learn more about how to to start their own business, no? Yeah, yeah. 
Um, so, yeah. I think what happened then was uh, because the, because they did some preliminary work already. So it was just about putting the site live. I think the challenge also with clients is that sometimes they have a long wish list. No? So you, you ideally, you should go for the minimum viable sure, uh, sure. product. So that was the objective. You go for the minimum viable to, just to make the site go live and mm. be operational. And then along the way, you start adding the other bits and pieces. And I think once an entrepreneur puts a website online, the next stage is to stabilize the website. Because, of course, you do your own testing. It appears to work. But the moment you start getting orders, the moment start traffic starts coming in, that's when you realize, oh, oh we don't have enough memory. Oh, oh uh, there's a problem here. There's a problem <laughs> there. So that's where you go for stabilizing. That's where finding people, among others. And and I guess that's and I guess that's all. There's also reason, or there's also um, logic in terms of starting slow but surely. Yes, I mean, yes. imagine if they really went full steam, and then all of a sudden their start, their site starts crashing. It's yeah. not gonna look at, good at them. So two years ago, it didn't work. But then you went to Janet's class. You, you were a student in this yeah. course, and then that's when you really got to know the ins and outs. Yes. As you said, you when you were starting, you didn't know where to to, to begin. Yeah, no? you didn't know what SEO. <laughs> we didn't know. Not people do. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We didn't know what. Uh, how do you market this or like? Because you know, when you put up a site, you can't expect people to come in or check out your site. Sure. It's not like your stores where you have the foot traffic of people coming in the yes. malls. They know in S in SM, for instance, they know where that the, the gadget place is. They yes. all go there. Yes. But how do you draw? Like in your case, how do you draw people to 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 your site to yeah, save right and earn? Now, yeah. We use Facebook. Uh, as you well know, social media right now, it's a, there's a very, very high, high penetration rate for social media in the Philippines, especially since uh, a lot of networks are offering free Facebook right now. So in our experience, when we built the site and we marketed it, uh, we got a lot of hits really from Facebook. Yeah, there were a lot of people sharing, uh, a lot of people clicking, going towards, um, clicking and converting later on to the site. Okay. Yeah. How much? How busy are you with your online, with your e-commerce? I mean, like, uh, what percentage would it be of your business? I mean, would it still be? I mean, of course, right yeah. Your bricks and mortar, I assume, are still the majority it of the operations, yeah. no? Yeah. But how much is, is taken up by e-commerce? Would you say? I would still. I mean, definitely at this point, I would say it's still around ten percent. Okay. Less well, than that. Well. Because uh, really, brick and mortar. Uh, we really started with brick and mortar, so that's the established part of the business. Now with e-commerce, uh, it was quite a challenge because it wasn't just putting up a site. We had to we had to convince everyone in the company or in the team to that this is the way to go. Because it's not just about selling online; it's actually about taking your customer experience uh, twenty four seven, taking your customer experience um, in such a way that people can reach you anytime. Yeah, because when you go to a mall, uh, the buying experience for gadgets is something somewhat like you go to SM mm -hmm. and then you go to the cyber zone area. Mm -hmm. And when <laughs> yes. you're there, there are so many stores Absolutely. lined up. Like yeah. 20 or whatever. Yeah. No? And you don't know where to start. And yeah. So you just start going to each one of those stores. Canvassing asking, and yeah, things like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And asking, oh, what's your promo today? What's your promo? And uh, that was one of our challenges also, especially if you're a multi-store uh, operations. Um, getting the inventories out because every store every area where the mm. store is located in, it's quite unique iba sure. iba yung mga brands that are uh, parang uh, parang well known in that area based on the demographic as well yes. and things like, for sure yeah. okay so parang uh, getting together all these items was also i mean e-commerce was also a way for us to put together all these items in such a way na nagiging uh, available na siya to, sa lahat yes. uh, nationwide. So, our peg that time was, uh, if you're familiar with Target. In the yes, US, yes, yeah. Target, yeah. So, Target uh, started out with the multi-branch uh, big department stores. And uh, right, they also have an e-commerce leg. So, they offer their uh, products in e-commerce. They offer special products in e-commerce that are not even in their stores. And you can pick it up at any Target store. Uh, any target store of your choice. Do you have that, that same the same same uh, model with your save and earn? Like you deliver and you also pick up in in, in your in stores. Uh, stores. Yeah. Uh, when we started out, yes, we 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 did that model. Like we have COD nationwide, and then we also had branch pickup. 
Uh, currently, though, we put it on hold because, like Ms. Jana said, going on that scale is really difficult. So um, we started out with deliveries, muna, but the goal is to the goal is to offer that. Yeah, which leads yeah. me to my next question. Um, how did you synchronize? And because for, for 20 years, you've had this bricks and mortar company, 40 yeah. branches. How do you synchronize now this new concept yeah. of, of e-commerce where obviously you, need, you have more, a different, logistic, different logistical requirements, different uh, p payment, online payment uh, schemes, et cetera, et cetera. How, do you, how did you manage to make them work together side by side? Was it along difficult? With the yeah, along with your regular operations, no? I would say, yeah, it's very difficult because um, the processors are different. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. different. And uh, the, the idea of uh, the way you approach customers is also different. The way you market is different. So what we did, we really had to create a team to focus on this. But the team should not be separate from your retail operations. They should work hand in hand because if you want to go omni-channel, uh, you really have to have your retail team work along with your online team to create this seamless customer experience where people can uh, buy online or people can uh, have their items picked up or even even to, even reaching such a point na later on, hopefully, that you can even return your items to the store but you bought it online. Oh, yung ganun. So you have one database. Uh oh, so it's not. It shouldn't be separate. What do you guys offer? Um, because you know, as you know, this, uh, as you know, there are a lot of uh, online retailers now for gadgets and things like that. What makes your experience different? Why would people? I mean, why would people go to your store, your online platform, yeah. not someone else's? Yeah. What do you offer? Well, um, one thing we noticed when with gadgets and like other items being sold, and like clothes, for example. Well. If you're really a serious gadget buyer, you'd buy, probably buy a unit that's around 3,000 and up, you know, going up to 40,000. Uh, one of your hesitations probably to go to buy it online would be you're scared that if you pay, you might not get the item. Yes. Yes. That's one of the fears that we find uh, in our market today. So, um, and also, what if you get the item? But there's something wrong with it. How do you return it? How do you return yeah. it? Or where do you run to? Yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's, that's quite a common problem, actually. That's why some people, uh, even though they're buying all these things online, uh, with gadgets, medyo, some are still iffy. Yes, so yes. yes. Actually, I bought my phone from them. My online? Note, uh, note, <laughs> my Note phone last year. But I was in Cebu. Uh, I realized that I need a new phone because I was preparing for a new training that I needed an Android device. And I was shopping on their website, and then I realized that, okay, but I think I want to get it right away. So I decided, I look at the site, and then I called to ask if it's available in store. So I went to the store, and I think the another difference there is that you can perform the deferred payment plan when you are in the store, which you cannot just easily do if you are online. Yes. H how fast do you deliver, Nikki? Siguro around five days. That's maximum already. Really? Yeah, three okay. to five days. Okay. Uh -huh. So and. Uh, but for branch pickup, ideally, once we have that on, we want the item to be available on the same day. On the same day, wow, so you okay. Can pick it up the same. That's really the goal. So, like what Miss Janet said, um, we want our stores to work seamlessly on because that's a problem, right? Sometimes you come into a store and it's not available. The product you want isn't available. So, with, with online, with e commerce, with an e commerce platform, you can't have that. It has to be on demand, you have that, right? Yeah. You have to have the yeah. or you can product. see what's there yes. in the outlet. Yes. So that's quite an interesting concept, especially since um, Omnichannel, we, uh, actually we learned about that term just last year when we took the course. But when we, when we found that model, we were just, uh, we thought, yeah, this is definitely the way to go for us. Now, you, you, you've just launched, right, your, your e-commerce uh, portal. Um, are you happy with how it's progressed since then? I mean, how much, how much has it grown? What is the growth of your, of your activity? Um, I would say that when we really started, we were very overwhelmed because uh, we didn't know how to get customers into our site. That was the first problem. But uh, later on, with the help of the other students and Miss Janet, and also we tinkered with Facebook marketing, uh, we finally got people into our site. And uh, especially if you have like special products or special promotions, like we had that um, my twenty eight promotion yes, last year, yes. and we had a fifty percent off sale. It did pretty well. Yeah. So um, I would say about. Uh, 
50 orders a week. Well, not yeah, yeah. bad. Well, what do you think, Janet? I mean, is that is that uh, it's not bad for a yeah for I a mean, new player if you get getting uh, into it? ten orders a day. Why not? Yeah, and huh? 50 orders a week. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty good. Especially uh, you don't want to you want you don't want to scale so fast because That's you have true. to manage also your refund, your returns. Yeah. So you want you really want yes. to stabilize the operation. So these are all. I would I would say the first year is a dry run mm. Yeah, mm. because you really get to become familiar with how everything is going to operate. Are there problems like that when some startups have gone too fast that only to realize that they can't catch up with it, with regard to operations with, uh, with all the other things you mentioned like the refunds returns and, and logistics, logistics and all deli- that not delivering the product yeah. on time no or sometimes there are damages and then people start ranting on social media and uh, i mean if you're starting the the main, the main uh, commodity that you have also is your reputation uh, reputation mm, is very delicate yes. for a small player so you don't want to take chances with your reputation that early yes because the moment someone has a bad experience right with your yes. with your e-commerce uh, portal, then it, it, it spreads, no, and then it right it even turns off our existing customers. Yes. So we really have to be very careful about the experience and uh, like what Miss Janice said, because that was when we wanted to start like two years ago. The idea was to go big, and then <laughs> <laughs> to go big. So, but uh, when we started it like this year, you know, it was a dry run and everything. We there were so many concerns. Yeah, we realized there were so many concerns that we didn't even expect last year when we were doing the business plan. I guess that's a natural uh, desire you know, for people wanting. But you have all this hype about this online, all, all these online opportunities, and then people want, like you said in your case, people want to start big, without thinking that you know perhaps you should take this slow, as you suggested. And let your, you know, just let the system, all the systems fall into place and everything yeah. work But of course, when you're planning, well. you plan for big numbers. Yes. I yes. mean, when you're planning, of you're, you're imagining that, who oh, I think I want to plan for 100 orders a day. That's not yeah. bad. But of course, when things start uh, become operational, that's where you realize up to how many can you only accept. Because even if you get 100 orders a day, you don't have inventory. And you wait for them to be shipped inside the country. It's gonna be a problem, especially if you're holding on to other people's money. Yeah. So, but I, I guess they can scale anytime uh, they they want also. But since they are also a traditional company, um, if they have resources, it's also a decision where okay, we have this much budget. How much are we going to put to digital? <laughs> <laughs> that's true, that's true. That's well, a uh, ladies, we have to pause for a break. But when you come back, um, one of your classmates and one of your former students who is now he's also involved in e-commerce but on, in the food side very challenging part of e-commerce is going to join us and talk about how his business naman is working and uh, we're going to talk about the differences between yours and his business and uh, finally we'll also talk about how what kind of advice you can give to viewers now who have businesses and are thinking of going on the e-commerce way so guys stick around because more of e-commerce opportunities and trends when philippines uncut trends Because you get to go, you get to do this with your existing cons- customers, yes. and you get new customers as well, even customers not from our area. So, and like before, with your forty bricks and mortar yeah. uh, outlets, it really was servicing just just that community or the the, 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 the local area. communities, no? Yeah, yeah. And now um, you 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 do sales and uh, you you send goods, mm-hmm. Luzon, Mindanao, and Luzon, the, even as far as Butuan, <laughs> we yeah <laughs> we we delivered items there, so. Uh, it's actually very interesting because um, with retail, you know, it's very uh, challenging right now with yes. retail because uh, uh, I met Miss Janet last year when we started our uh, e-commerce uh, entrepreneurship course. That was around January, and then uh, we graduated uh, around Feb this year. So that was about one year and um, a month of parang mentorship from Miss Janet. So over that period, we um, got to meet other students or other students like CJM and uh, I also got to meet other people in the e-commerce uh, industry like for logistics and all of that so uh, it was truly a very enriching experience. It's a one-year course you said? Yeah. And it covers does it cover the entire uh, range of topics when it comes to e-commerce? More or less. More, more or, or less. less. We try yeah. to cover as much as we can uh, but of course you only see the real thing once you're in action. So basically, if people take your course, like uh, Nikki here, you can already, you know, you're armed with the knowledge to, to start yes. an e-commerce business or maybe... That is the deliverable. Yes. Oh, really? Uh, okay. Yeah. 
Okay. So, so part of the deliverable of, of Janet's course is you have to apply this to your own business or start an e-commerce business. Yes. Start an e-commerce business or uh, have an existing business but launch it as e-commerce. Great, great. Let's talk about your business, Save and Earn Wireless. Tell us a little bit about uh, your, your family business, right? Yeah, yeah. So Save and Earn Wireless is actually a gadget retail shop and we're based in Visayas. So uh, our branches are in Cebu, Pohol, Dumaguete, Bacolod area. And uh, last year, uh, yeah, as it was part of the deliverable also, uh, we started our own e-commerce shop. Okay. So that was late last year. And then um, now we're online. It's under saveandearn.com.ph. And uh, we've been selling gadgets online ever since. We do COD nationwide, sorry, that's cash on delivery nationwide. And uh, we also we also use our online platform to communicate with our customers. Welcome back to Philippines Uncut. Tonight's topic is e-commerce trends and opportunities. And uh, joining us still is Janet Rural, e-commerce advocate. And joining her is her former student, uh, Nikki Roldan, and she is with Save and Earn Wireless. Welcome, Nikki, to Philippines Uncut. And of course, welcome, Janet, to our second segment. Now, um, tell us a bit about the, your relationship. You were once a student of, of Janet. Yes. Uh, 